to talk about uh, movement with your partner uh, kind of after your third shot when you're in that transition area, right? Um, so we talked about this earlier. Uh, the third shot, maybe a few years ago, was not uh, a shot that people were looking to be aggressive on, right? It was kind of a shot that they were just hitting in order to get to the kitchen because pickleball was played at the kitchen. Now it's a different story, right? It's a shot that uh, people were looking to be very aggressive on, right? And so the question we'll get all the time is, you know, um, when um, I'm, my partner's hitting the third shot, where should I be standing, right? So there are usually three different answers we'll get. So if I'm hitting the third shot from here, should Catherine be um, A in front of me? Should she be B next to me? Or should she be C behind me, right? Um, if you're looking to be aggressive and put pressure on your opponent's fourth shot, the answer is A, she should be in front of you, okay? The reason being, if she's next to me, right, um, if I hit the third shot between the two of us, the person that is going to know if the third shot is good or bad first is going to be me because I'm actually going to be the one hitting the ball. The ball is coming off my paddle. So if I hit this ball, by the time I know it's good and I'm moving forward, Catherine sees that I'm moving forward, and now we're kind of moving forward, and I'm at the kitchen line before Catherine. So that's not really putting any pressure on Bethany and Clint because they make it clear that... Um, they're going to go to Catherine's feet, right? It's obvious where they need to put the ball. Whereas, in that same scenario, if I'm hitting my third, Catherine's slightly in front of me, right? She's looking, she sees that I hit a good drop and then I'm moving. Now she can get to the kitchen line before me, right? Or at least at the same time as me. And in that scenario, now Clint and Beth Bethany have a much harder fourth shot, figuring out where they're going to put that next ball. Because now either Catherine is in the middle looking big before me, or we're both at the kitchen line at the same time. So it's not as obvious where you put that next ball, right? Um, so if you've ever heard of the shake and bake, um, that's the only way that it can happen, is if your partner is slightly cheating up, um, hoping that you hit a good third that they can capitalize on, right? Now, here's the mistake that people make, right? They think because Catherine is cheating off of my drop, that means that she should move forward no matter what. That is not always true, right? If I notice that I hit a bad drop and I say, watch, Catherine comes back with me and gets ready to defend, right? It doesn't mean because she's cheating and moving forward before I hit the drop that she's committed to moving forward no matter what you have to be able to make adjustments based on the shot that your partner hits with a third, right? Um, there are certain cues that Catherine can look for. If she sees that I'm inside the, the baseline a couple feet, my body weight's forward, I have a pretty good drop, she's pretty certain in this scenario that I'm gonna hit a good drop, so she's probably cheating and getting to the line really early because I'm in such good position, right? If she notices that I'm hitting a third shot, and I'm a few feet behind the baseline, I've got one leg up in the air, my contact point's like this, is she anticipating a good drop? Probably not, right? So in that scenario, she's not gonna be cheating going all the way up to the kitchen because I'm in such bad position hitting the third, right? So there are certain cues that you can look for in terms of uh, body movement, right? That, that can kind of give her a better idea of if I'm gonna hit a good drop or not. Um, another thing that's really important is partner communication, right? If I'm about to hit a drop and I feel that it's gonna be a really good one, maybe before I even hit the ball, maybe I'll say something like go. So Catherine knows that she can run up because I feel really confident in my drop. If I'm about to hit a drop and I do not feel very confident and I feel like I'm gonna mess it up, then I'm gonna say watch so that Catherine knows that she's gonna have to stay back, we're gonna have to get ready to defend and hit a, uh, a drop on the fifth ball, right? Um, so making sure that uh, now that the third shot has become one that's more aggressive, it's a more aggressive scenario, you want to put you and your partner in the best position to put pressure on your opponents when you can. And that's one way to do that. <laughs>